Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me? My name is Chief and I play the role of George and I'm your host for this episode. Sister, yes. when I grow a little, I want to be like you. Hey, Debbie, today you surprised me, wow. Here on What Does YOLO Mean To Me? We get to meet you, the fans, to discuss what the YOLO TV series really means to you as an individual and the impact it has made on your life as well as touch on a few important adolescent sexual reproductive health issues which were highlighted in YOLO. Remember, you can enjoy a good life by sleeping under an insecticide treated mosquito net to prevent malaria. Also, to enjoy a good life in this COVID-19 era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear a face mask, wash your hands with soap and running water, do not hug or shake hands, use hand sanitizers and avoid touching your mouth and face. Ensure physical distance of about two meters between you and other people when in public and try as much as possible to avoid crowded places. I have with me five individuals and I will let them introduce themselves and tell us what they love about YOLO. I'm Major Paul Daniel, 18 years of age. I school at Accra Technical University. For me, I think YOLO is educative and entertaining. My name is Kalista Gamo, and with YOLO series, it has helped me to acquire more knowledge on teen pregnancy, and it also helped me to release stress. My name is Teresa Nanadra Boati, I'm 18 years of age. YOLO is very fun, it's educative, and it's really nice, you have to watch it. My name is Matilda Momobuchi, I'm a student of Ghana Institute of Journalism. YOLO means a lot to me, it inspires me to do stuff which I couldn't do before, like it's built my self-confidence and then my self-esteem, it has really helped me a lot. Hi guys, my name is Pearl and I'm 18 years of age, I'm in the Ghana Institute of Journalism, I stay at Hachio and the reason why I love YOLO is it educates and it entertains viewers and everyone. Today, we will be talking about role models, social groups, and social media. Before that, let's watch a scene from your favorite TV series, YOLO. My name is Felicia. Please, I'd like to know if it's right to go into a guy's home when there's no one around. What do you think about that? Motivation. Quick, Darlington. But my G's, yeah. So what makes one a good role model? A good role model is someone who inspires people with their good character. They rather advise people to do things that they do because they know that it is the right thing to do. A good role model educates people on how to learn and achieve good aims in the future. What makes role models are the good qualities they bring out. They being confident in whatever they do, respecting other people's views, and being optimistic and creative. I think a good role model is someone whose activities, whose lifestyles are going to impact something on you. Yeah. Because people look after you, you need to be that good example. Anything that you do, either good or bad, so far as people look after you, they will copy the same thing. What makes one a bad role model? Bad role models, like, I think they are kind of rude. Um, they aren't patient, like they don't have time for you, like they, they always want to be in a hurry to do something, they don't want to learn. So with that kind of person, you can't have enough time to even take something from his or her behavior, his or her activities now. A bad role model is always criticizing people. They get angry easily when you've not annoyed them. The person is not dressing decently and the person is not befriend with others. They don't care about people's feelings, they always act according to what they feel. A bad role model demonstrates qualities such as rudeness, disrespecting, naturally into drugs, and demonstrating behaviors which are opposite to good role models. Is it a good idea to have a role model, and why or why not? Yes, it's a good idea to have a role model because it inspires an individual to zenith success in life. Having a role model in my case, I'm into journalism, so there is something that I would like to learn about role modeling. I'm not having a role model. How will I learn it? I will just go and take somebody who is even bad role model. But me, with that uh, case, I'm trying to just learn something, so I'll just be in a rush and take that particular thing and learn about it. By you being into it, having a good role model, it will help you to just learn that particular thing from that particular person that you know it's your good role model. Um, it's a good idea to have a role model because as a human being, you should have someone in your life who would motivate you, who would encourage you, whose activities are going to be like, um, I can do this. 
was, uh, even if even if you want to give up in life, you can just look forward to that person that you want to be like, yeah. It's good for you to have a role model because a role model inspires you and then in your behavior and attitude. They educate you on how to settle your issues, like you follow them, whether it's good or bad. So how did Araba fare in handling Felicia's situation? Araba did a great job by um, advising Felicia to stay away or to give um, psychoadjustance because um, I believe as a role model you should always coach whoever is after you, whoever is looking up to you, you should always guide them, guide their ways. You shouldn't let them um, go into the wrong way. Yeah, so I think um, Araba did a brilliant job. Araba talked Felicia through. She advised her on then the effects of um, sexual reproductive health and then the problems attached to it. She made her know the rights and wrongs of sexual reproductive organs and then the uh, things associated with them. Felicia listened to Araba in order to stay away from from cycle so that she can focus on her study and move on in life. So Araba advised Felicia to take her time because she's in school and she's not so much matured. So dealing with such behaviors in school may also hinder you from your learning environment. She was advised to stay away from that particular person, which in case like she wasn't advised to stay away from that person, she may go to that place where they will have contact, like having sex, and it will lead into teenage pregnancy, which may lead her to drop out of school, or she may also contact STDs. So the advice given to her helped her a lot. So how did Felicia's access to the right information about her sexuality work for her against the advances of Psycho. Yes, it's a very good thing in order for her to achieve her aims in the future so that Psycho won't destroy her. It's made Felicia distance herself from Psycho and then helped her in education. Um, I think Felicia pay heed to whatever Araba told her. As a good role model, you have to set good examples for others to follow. So what Araba did plays an impact on Felicia's life. So it brought um, um, Felicia's consciousness on how to abstain from such behaviors in school so as to help develop her academic work and what she's in school for. Now let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about this topic. YOLO is an educative program that I really love because it tends to educate without being boring. YOLO, you only live once. My name is Marilyn Mamia Bazam. I'm a student of the Ghana Institute of Journalism. A good role model is someone whose lifestyle is emulatable. Um, a younger person should be able to look up to you and say that this is a good lifestyle and I want to follow it. A bad role model is someone whose lifestyle is not is not is nothing to write him about. A bad role model um, lives his life on the highway and it's not good for any child um, who wants to have a bright future to follow. Of course it's a good idea to have a role model because we look at people who have set standards for themselves, people who have achieved things in life and if, of course if you want to achieve something in life you, you, might, you have to look up to those um, who have already done that. Araba did a very good job in handling Felicia's issue because um, she gave her good advice, an advice which in the long run will save Felicia's life. Well, Felicia's um, access to the right information saved her from a lot of issues like teenage pregnancy and contracting STIs from cycle. Our next topic of discussion is the use of social media or the involvement in social groups. Before that, let's watch a scene from your favorite TV series, YOLO. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. You're once again welcome to the YMK meeting where we get to discuss about our reproductive health. Hello everyone. Hi, hi, you're welcome. Alright then, I think we can go ahead and start with um, today's meeting. My people, what's up? Eh? Why go first start this meeting without your commander in chief? Oh, welcome, George. Thank you. Well, I guess it's the first time after all. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Are young people interested in social groups? If yes, why? Young people are interested in social groups, yes, because it creates a platform for them to bring out their problems, sexual health problems and issues for solutions. Yes, young people are interested in social groups. 
it's because it helps them motivate themselves. Especially when like they have issues with maybe their friends, it educates them to express their feelings on how to manage themselves in such things. Yes, young people are very much interested in social groups because it, it helps boost their self-confidence and self-esteem. There are some groups that teach us a lot about how our health should be, like our scent, how you smell. There are some groups that they created and be teaching about it. So that particular group, as a young lady like me, I may not know the shot that I'll use, the razor that I'll use that will be helpful to me. But joining that social group, it will help me to, like that particular thing, it will be on me again. Um, it's a yes and it's a no. Because um, as the saying goes, majority carries the vote. But for the yes, there are people that feel like they, they, they need to socialize, they need to get in touch with other people who are going through the same problem they're also going through with their reproductive health. Um, so uh, with that, they'll be able to have this kind of comfort environment to be able to express themselves for other people to also feel free, like feel okay around them. In your opinion, why do you think young people are not interested in being part of social groups where they are encouraged to share their reproductive health issues for positive advice? Some people are shy. Others feel that it's bringing out their personal life. It's exposing them to social group. So they, they feel that they have to distance themselves from that. Because they're like, oh God, should I bring this? I'm shy, so sh should I do this? I'm like, people will see, people will know. No, they don't want that, so they are trying to distance themselves from it in order to keep their staffs to themselves. It's a no because um, some people feel like when they meet with other people and uh, if, if they tell them their problems, like maybe I have HIV and I, I go and tell people around me that I have HIV, there will be this kind of stigmatization, they wouldn't try to get close to you, like everybody will be avoiding you, even if you meet your boyfriend there, it's going to be like, what, she has HIV, I shouldn't get close to her. Yeah, so it's a no because of that stigmatization. People don't like social group because others make fun of them, especially like I've told a friend something, then you realize she has gone and told someone else, then like the news is spreading on and on. So the person will get bored, so the person prefers to um, keep it to himself rather to tell any other person. Young people are not interested in engaging in social group things because sometimes people may think their messages shouldn't go outside for others to know, so they try to be in the midst of those in their same feelings. So, example, like telling you I might have coronavirus and telling others I might have coronavirus can affect me in a way, in an emotional way, in a physical way, because there will be a stigmatization around wherever I live. Also, what can we do to make young people more comfortable in discussing matters of their sexuality and also to seek positive sexual advice? We have to get closer to them. We have to make them feel that it is not a bad thing to do. We have to make them know that it is a kind of, it's a form of education. You are educating other people who don't have the knowledge about it. So yes, you are educating people who don't know how it works. We should educate them in it so that they'll be more focused and trust their role models who is advising them in it. You know, and also create a good environmental platforms where they can um, express their feelings very well. So that they won't keep anything to themselves. I think or I believe they need this kind of um, comfortable environment, like this kind of serene environment, this kind of nice environment that would make the people around like feel okay, like feel comfortable around each other to express their feelings so that some women even be like uh, what they are going through is worse than others. So they feel okay. They, I, I, I just, I believe the environment should be cool, like should be nice, not with bad people like with people that are, like, that are easily understandable. Now let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about this topic. Beautiful prolite my name. I'm 19 years of age and I'm a student. I hereby recommend Yellow to all because it's very educational and also gives positive vibes. I hereby am meant to say yes because social groups give us a platform which gives young, young people their ability or the mandate to share their opinions, mind, ideas, and also bring out solutions and problems. Young people of nowadays are very good in sharing ideas with their peers rather than their elderly peers. Young people of nowadays are not interested in sharing their ideas 
let me say positive advice on uh, reproductive health because they feel very guilty of themselves because of the kind of lifestyle they live on social media they think if they stand to uh, educate people about uh, reproductive health their kind of stigmatization scrutinization and um, abuses people might give them out there will even bring their morale down that is why they don't stand a chance to educate their young people or people on reproductive health i think now the social platforms that gives the young people chance to stand and show their assets and distance must be something they should cut it off yes because these platforms were given for educational purposes but now the young people has turned it into something different which characters stand out for you as role models in yolo can you mention some of your role models in yolo how do we handle the pressure on social media where different people are sharing all sorts of pictures and videos please get interactive with us send us your views via video or text to the official social media handles which is YOLO TV series and do drop a comment sometime. Your host for the next edition of What YOLO Means To Me is Flex and he has a message for you. Hey guys, next week, clear your schedule, set a reminder and join me and let's discuss malaria. That's what I'm saying. What's wrong? John, I do feel very, very cold. You are very hot. Yeah. You carry the water cup. If I pour the water from my body, I could be okay. No, no, the way I'm shivering, I think you need to visit the sick bay. No, no, no. Just give me some pink and I will be fine. No, no, you need to visit the sick bay so that they can diagnose and see what's wrong with you. Boy. No, no. See, I forget to the court for the game. Today be my first official match as a school team's captain. I know if you made this match, you know what I'm saying? Hey Max, I can see you. Okay. It's been great coming your way today. I had a lot of fun interacting with you guys. I hope we continue to be positive influences on our peers and also seek positive role models to emulate. To enjoy a good life in this pandemic, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear a face mask, wash your hands with soap and the running water. Do not hug or shake hands, use hand sanitizers and avoid touching your face and mouth. Ensure physical distance of about two meters between you and others when in public and also avoid overcrowded places. Remember to live a good life. Good life, live it well. Good life is an everyday thing. YOLO, you only live once. Make a date with us next week for another exciting episode. I'm out.